Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma and Brian E. Roach. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma, and joining me here early this week, because there's Thursday night football this week on our Steelers and Browns pregame show of one, Mr. Brian E. Roach. And Brian, even though this is a little bit of a pregame, we got some postgame stuff to still talk about as we still have a bad taste left in our mouth. I got to ask you, man. What did you, it, it, this is an all encompassing question. Cause there's a few of them. You know what? Maybe we'll steal, maybe we'll steal something from the old, uh, from the, from the vault here. I know this isn't your graphic, but <laughs> we're going to show the lightning bolt. It's usually the lightning round for flash. Um, three parts here. Do you feel the offensive lines? Well, first of all, how you feeling? Um, how you doing my friend? Okay. That's good. You know, there you go. What are you, I... <laughs> All right, man. Is the offensive line a problem? Do you think? What do you, how have you felt about the offensive line? The offensive line is still a problem. Is it as much of a problem as I thought it would be? Maybe not, but it is still a problem. Okay. Um, even though, like, we only mention them when we agree. Pro Football Focus actually has Chooks only giving up like two uh, pressures on seventy-eight pass blocking snaps. And I got to find the one for James Daniels and I have, and James Daniels on, on the same 78, zero pressures with an 84.1, uh, grade from pro football focus. I felt like there's a lot of people out there that are saying the offensive line isn't giving Mitchell Trubisky enough time. There's a lot of people out there also saying that's, 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 I can't even say, I can't say what it is, but let's just take a male cow who then defecates and what comes out of him. That's what that is. It's burrow <laughs> Shih Tzu is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's crap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, there's people out there that are also of the opinion that Matt Canada and his play calling is the problem. And I'm not going to totally absolve all of his play calling, but man, oh. I didn't have a huge problem with what was good. Let's put it this way from where you sit and you're able to see the full view of the field. Do you think there were some plays left on the field versus the play calling being an issue? It's there is a much different view from watching on television versus watching from my 500 level seats. Right. Um, So when you're watching from the second tier, you do get to see the whole field. And I can tell you that what you come away with after, especially after a game like the one on Sunday is that the individual who is currently Helming the offense has a issue with vision. Issue with vision. Would that be Mitchell Trubisky? Yes. And, and, you know, look, (laughs) not that I've been on the Trubisky bandwagon or anything like that. Right. But I have said repeatedly, he didn't do enough to lose the get the the thing, Uh, you know, but but here, I'm going to show you something. Look, just hold on a second. Here you go. This is my current view of the world. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Uh-oh. Not going to be Uh-oh. ready for this. Uh-oh. <laughs> Brian, I'm, I'm digging it, man. I'm digging it all the way. Like, I'll tell you what. We've got to uh, we've got to get more in line on these things with the show. Yeah, I can see it. it says Kenny Pickett on the back. For those of you who are only on the audio, Brian has just switched on a number eight jersey. I wasn't sure if it was one of his signed jerseys that he may have gotten over all of the years and let me tell you in fact hold on one second here hold on going with the flow here there it is for the people who had said to me oh hey you always buy the backup quarterback jerseys well here i'm not gonna hopefully not hit my mic here but well you're waiting for me to put on my picket jersey (laughs) There we go. And then, of course, I got to do the matching cap. Hold on. Now I got the matching cap. Got the eight here. Throw on my throw on my headphones. I'm I'm firmly aboard. I was gonna wait one more game, like before I matched the Foco bobblehead. 
<laughs> to a T. Although his jersey says one because it's the draft night one, of course. Yeah. So, uh, but I got a bobblehead too. How about that? Thanks to the folks at Foco, Foco.com for all your bobblehead needs. They also got Franco Harris, Najee Harris. They got one, I think, with Franco and Najee. They're always doing limited edition things. If you're a bobblehead nut, check them out for sure. So, uh, Brian, I was going to wait one more game because we all know but this is my one point. practice, right? One they're practice not, for Thursday. They're not going to switch for this game on Thursday, right? It's too short of a window, but I am hopeful. I am hopeful that the leash uh, on Miss Mr. Trubisky is about yay big. Uh, and for those of you who can't see, I'm talking about less than an inch. Um, and, and I'll tell you why. Look, this is a game that they can – I mean, the, the Browns are not a great team right now, but they've been able to put up points. This is a game that they can easily lose. Um, and we we said that actually at the beginning of the year, too. We had them potentially going 0-4. So they've already won and won. Game that they just lost is a game they absolutely should have won. There was absolutely no reason for the, the offense to sputter as much as it did. Um, while... The folks who are saying that George Pickens was open every single down, he wasn't. But he was open a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot, a lot. There was a video. Um, There's one of the SI guys that are on the SI blog that does a lot of the film work on Twitter. I, I don't want to misquote his name because I can't think of it off the top of my head. But there was a play I saw. Um. I think Deontay Johnson may have been coming in the slaughter as Claypool, but they totally took the safety with them as soon as they cut inside on the middle of the field. And George Pickens was one-on-one. -on -one. And that was coming towards me uh, in that corner end zone. I'm looking there at disbelief. And my, my, my cousin, who I've been ragging, he's like, man, I don't think Mitch is as bad as you say he is. And I'm like, after that game, it's just kind of like, I think everybody is over it. Uh, it was kind of uh, a, a strange thing. And we'll talk about the Browns too and what they're going to be able to do as far as pressure because and everything else. They've got some strange injuries heading into this game. It's always tough. This game we said was a coin flip in a certain ways because number one, when we did we originally did our predictions, we didn't know if Deshaun Watson was going to be suspended or not. And uh, Jacoby Brissett, the quarterback, as it is now. So that changes things a little bit. And the with with the same deal too is Brissett. Let's talk about him just for a quick second. The leading receivers, okay, Amari Cooper, nine to ten, 101 yards. He had a touchdown. He totally burned Sauce Gardner. He didn't get any hands on him. Didn't do anything. He just stood there. He looked like a light post. Uh, it's just just nothing in that game. But aside from Cooper, it was like Harrison Bryant, three receptions. Uh, David Ajoku, three receptions. Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, three and two. And then David Bell, Dominic Felton, and Donovan Peoples-Jones, all three combined for two catches for a total of nine yards. What's that sound like to you? It sounds like the Steelers offense. It sounds like the guy who could only hit the running backs and tight ends in stride here or there. He did get Cooper a few times in that game. Uh, you know, they the Jets, like you said, they were up. Uh, what were they up total at one point? Hold on. I have it here. Uh, it was, well, it was kind of back and forth. They were originally, it was 14-7, 14-all, 17-14, 17-all, 24-17, 30-17, and then the Jets came back from that with only 2.02 left in the entire game, and the Jets and Joe Flacco back up, never elite Joe Flacco, throws for over 300 yards and four touchdowns on what should be a pretty halfway decent secondary in Cleveland. And they just played that game at home. They got a little more of an advantage. Steelers got to go on the bus. Steelers have played that, that that Cincinnati game, I think, factored into this one with New England. Playing that extra quarter. There's dudes that were still maybe a little tired, banged up, not fully recovered. And now you got a short week. You got maybe like one practice. That's why you can't install Kenny Pickett right now. But we were talking about this. The reason we have these shirts on is I think it's the end of the road. Q yep. boys the Ben for Mitch Trubisky. The job security being that QB one, that veteran, everything that's kind of, I think out the window and it, it, it really depends on this game. And if you look at some turning points, look at Mason Rudolph when he came back from injury and when he got yanked, he had played what three games. He went three and zero. Oh, it was a little bit of a struggle in 2019, went to Cleveland completely bad. That first half of that Bengals game, bad. Mike Tomlin went with Duck Hodges who played what two games, three games. He didn't have that much that he had shown previously to that. And it made me think of some other situations like that. Landry Jones in much the same way, two games, three games, a third game against the Browns, 
in Big Ben's absence, and Ben was the backup, and then Landry got hurt. It Buru Shih Tzu, man, he didn't get hurt. <laughs> he got pulled. He may have gotten like a, a splinter or something in his finger, but I think I think Mike Tomlin, uh, I, I, to say you need to have much more of a picture or more of a window on Mitch Trubisky, I think it's, we're here. It could even happen within this game, depending on how poorly the team plays. They might just throw, they might just throw them out there. I'm telling you, and I'm not sure if you heard the the pod, the, the post-game podcast with uh me and Zach, but I, I was actually we were talking during the game. We were we were texting back and forth, and I think you saw Kenny was on the sideline with a helmet and a helmet yep. on. And I'm not I've I've never seen a backup quarterback, and it was a little different than just mental reps. You're trying to think, okay, he's got mental reps, he's putting his helmet on, maybe he's listed, uh, you know, whatever be the case, and he's in that huddle. But he didn't do that again. That was that drive where uh, Mitch came in and then they ended up scoring. And then that didn't happen again. It didn't happen before that. It didn't happen after that for any type of mental reps. Somebody puts their arm around him on the sideline, one of the position coaches, and he goes up about 20 yards and stands at the 50-yard line, just biding his time, waiting his turn. I think they were having this conversation already, decided against it. That may have bit them in the ass because Mitch showed them something and then took it away two or four for five yards. Yeah, look. I mean, I, I, I've seen enough. I mean, and I think that they probably have too. Unless Mitch comes out here on Thursday night and lights the Browns up, uh, I think the following game will be the debut of number eight. And if it's not, I think the amount of howling that you will hear uh, from that stadium when the Jets come into town <laughs> will be absolutely hello spam i refuse to answer spam i'm um, sorry about that but <laughs> you know it, it's gonna be crazy right i mean the kenny chants were bad enough in this game and this is only game wait wait two. no no you couldn't have heard those up in the 500 level mike tomlin couldn't hear him on the sideline what are you and talking about i tweeted them <laughs> <laughs> He was in him. It was like, I know you're not the Will Ferrell fan, but it's like Step Brothers where uh, they're they're chanting, um, uh, is it Devin or Brennan has a mangina. And even you got the old guy with the cane that's like joining in with the chants. It's like his own grandfather or whatever. <laughs> Making fun of the kid in high school, uh, high school play. Uh, you were you were right there with them. Chanting Kenny, Kenny. I am kind of shocked I, I that you threw chant. the jersey on. I was not prepared to jump the shark on this already. I said I was going to give it one more. And damn it, Flash, yeah, you sent us, you sent us both. I think in this direction, just uh, you know, one way, one way train uh, on its I, way I, to the no, picket I, I'm station. I'm not giving, I'm not giving uh, Zacadonia the. Oh, the, I am. He, he definitely this is pushed my own me off eyes the cliff. Telling me that Kenny's not. You know, Kenny, excuse me, that Mitch is not good enough. This is my own eyes watching a game going, really? You're going to look down the field at a guy who's open and then throw to Najee for two yards. You're going to look repeatedly down the field at guys who you could throw open and then dump it down, you know, a yard and a half. It, it It's not even that. Mitch is being prevented from going down the field. It's not that they're not calling plays that are putting guys in positions down the field. He is balking at throwing the ball. Whether that's because he got picked early in the game, I don't care. Because no, uh, he didn't he, get picked he, at all he, in Cincinnati and did the same thing practically, except for a flea flicker. Right. And I, I'm just, I saw enough to, to know that, this offense is probably good as it stands right now. Good for one drive a game, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> so okay. that has to change. You cannot win that way. I know, and uh, I, I hate saying it because I showed like the many faces of Mitch Trubisky. I did it. I did his last uh, starting season in 2020 in Chicago. And I broke those up into those three game spans and you had either highly accurate, mostly because it's tight ends and running backs and maybe not as many yards. And then he had some more yards, but he also had like, you know, two to one TD to INT. I think it was like seven to three or seven to four. And that was like his best situation. And the other one where he fumbled a lot, there's like, if you, if you put one good thing in, it's like, you have to swap it out. The, the other, you just can't like build the perfect 
quarterback with Mitch Trubisky. You you exchange one piece, and it's like, well, nope, you only get two slots. It's like playing like I don't know, like a like a role playing game or something. Like um, I'm trying to think. It reminds me of like I don't know, Avengers game or something on Xbox, and you're trying to level up and you get certain armor or whatever. Yeah, but you can't wear like two pieces of armor, so you got to take one or take one weapon and trade it with the other weapon. Can't can't dual wield there. So. Uh, this is Mitch Trubisky. It's like, do you want him to throw a pick? No. Okay, we're going to add fumbling to the list or taking sacks or checking down. Like, you want him to throw downfield? Then it's, uh, I know, I've I've come off like, I've tried. I tried. I really did try. And I know people aren't going to believe me, but I just was really, really down. I know people thought that I sounded like a clown because I was more pro Mason. I don't know that Mason would be as bad. Can the offense still be anemic? Absolutely, it can with Kenny as well. But it's more of the unknown versus the guy that I did know, that I saw 50 starts, that I saw those, whatever I said, 46 uh, games with over 20 passes, and there's only like a handful where he's actually throwing three or more touchdowns. It's a one-to-two touchdown guy that can't even get 200 yards in a game right now. And Joe Flacco goes to Cleveland and throws for 304 tutties, man. What's up? You, you want to know what really turned the tide for me? Here's what turned what's the up? tide. Mitch Trubisky made me say something good about Mac Jones. Oh, no. You can't be doing that. And and that's it for me. If you're going to make me say something good about Doughboy, I'm going to be annoyed. So you made me say something good about Mac Jones, which I'm sitting up there. And, of course, you know what I'm talking about is the touchdown pass to Nelson Aguilar where he basically catches it off of Witherspoon's head. Um, and if Witherspoon gets his, himself around, gets his hands up, it's an incomplete. But this is what happens when you give your receivers a chance. Doesn't mean it will always work, but he gave his guy a chance. It's what Ben used to do. And God forbid I compare Mac Jones to Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> but all I what? need. This just went off the rails big time. <laughs> is enough of that, right? That was enough for me to go. Uh, Give me Kenny Pickett. Give me the guy who's young and I don't want to call Kenny dumb because I don't know Kenny, but is is full of of juice and is going to do stuff that probably isn't the smartest moves, but at least is aggressive as opposed to a guy who clearly is playing to not lose his job. Uh, uh, that's exactly what it looks like. And that's why I was saying I wasn't going to throw, I said this on you know, the other show, I'm not throwing Matt Canada necessarily under the bus. Uh, the first game, I may have had some questions on play calling, but the Steelers had over 50% conversion on first down. They only did that three times last year. Two of those were the big shootout kind of blowout games with the Chargers and Vikings more or less against prevent defenses in the second half when the scores already kind of run away. The other one was against the Denver Broncos where they completed, I think either 53 or 58%. So that was, uh, I saw on third down, even though Najee's not seeing the field, you got a lot of film coming out there and people are already trying to say, well, he's another Alabama running back bust. He's Trent Richardson or whatever. Dude's got a bum wheel. You know what I mean? That's probably uh, taken into account. May, I don't know if it's his left or right foot, but whichever one he's going to cut on, it's programmed in your brain. It's wired. He's playing. He's playing dinged, you know, and that's going to affect you. That's going to affect you mentally. Fatigue uh, it will get to you mentally. These hot, humid days will get to you mentally. Go out there and cut the, cut the grass, folks. It's approaching mid 80s and 90s in the middle of this week. Very unusual for September. Go out, cut the grass. Don't drink any water or anything. Come inside and then like try and type an essay or something. You probably don't even really want to watch TV without a cold beverage. And because you can't focus, you can't pay attention. And that's the same thing that happens in these key situations with these athletes. I understand they're meant to be finely tuned and conditioned. It's still week two, but fatigue's not part of the problem with, with Mitch there. And he even took ownership of two of the sacks of the three that he took. Of course, the Steelers getting a great big goose egg, which did not, Snap the streak that happened last year against the Cincinnati Bengals in which I think TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith both got hurt or were out in that game. That was the 75 game NFL record for a defense um, at 75 sacks total in a row, at least one in each game. And the Steelers have led the league in sacks over the last uh, five years. They're either tied for or led the league. And it just didn't seem like they were bringing a lot of pressure. I didn't even really see a whole lot with the blitz packages. I know they tried to make up for the loss 
of TJ Watt there. And my thought about the Cleveland Browns is, is that uh, you're going to have the same kind of game plan that anyone's going to have against the Steelers. And that is force Mitch Trubisky to beat you with his arm. The Steelers are going to try and do the same with Jacoby Brissett and try and, um, and try and lock up Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. And we'll see what ends up happening with that. It looks like the Browns, um, couple offensive linemen out, Brian, maybe out, Brian. I think Jack Conklin may, may have already been ruled out, uh, for this game. I'm going to have to pull it back up for a second. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Of course, David, we'll, we'll go through the whole thing, obviously on defense too, but maybe Joel Petonio bicep injury. He doesn't know about Jack Conklin yet with a knee. So without those two guys on the line, you also got Ethan Posick. They're going three deep now as far as who's been playing at the center position. Uh, the line is at the same line that they had last year, which may actually benefit the Steelers. And then so on a short week. Yeah, look, I am, I watched the end of that game and was on Sunday and was disgusted by the fact that the end of the game, when you know the Patriots are going to do nothing but run the ball, we couldn't stop the run. Um, doesn't mean we got gashed, but you can't give up four and five and six yards on every run. Um, and that was discouraging. So uh, let's keep our fingers crossed that their line is terrible because we got issues. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely got some issues. Um, probably a good time to bring this up to the um, uh, one of our sponsors, BU, BUSR. And... They um, are offering a pretty healthy bonus here. We'll get to the line on this game, but you go and sign up over at BUSR. Uh, actually, use the uh, the promo code that's being shown below, Steel City Bitly uh, slash BUSR dash Steel City, and <laughs> you could get you could receive a new member bonus of up to a one thousand dollar match on your first deposit plus. $25 in casino chips. If you head on over to BUSR, you could bet on just about any sport that's available. That's right. They have the, uh, they have every sport casino race book. And then of course, all of the incentives, you can do this from your mobile phone. So uh, they also have roulette. Uh, Brian, you may be into the Baccarat. If you've been a Baccarat player, blackjack player, I just learned of a sport today called cheese rolling. I don't know if they've got the line for that. I don't we'll know. Check if it out. You got, if, I'm not betting on cheese rolling because I don't know what it does. I also heard of bog snorkeling. <laughs> I, I'm not exactly sure what that is. But... Our, our, UK, our UK listeners will know what cheese rolling and bog snorkeling are. These are actual sports done by actual people in the UK. And by God, I bet somebody is letting you bet on them, even if these guys aren't. But how much money do you get? What did you tell me? Uh, if you take a look right there, down if you're watching this, or if you head on over and check out the show notes, if you're listening to an audio version, a new member is up to $1,000 and $25 in casino chips. So you get to check out the Baccarat. You get to check out the Blackjack or the Roulette. Uh, I used to love playing my uh, online poker too, man. I, that, that above all. But let's take a look at not only some of the sports that you can check out over at BUSR, but also the lines as they are currently posted here. This show, of course, being recorded on Tuesday. So this can this can change or fluctuate. But there you go, Brian. Uh, mostly NFL stuff is being shown here, but you got NCAA college football. We're headed into the thick here at the end of Major League Baseball, MMA, NBA, and NHL as they come along, even tennis and volleyball. Steelers, five-point underdogs in this game to the Browns, but this over-under is even lower than it was last week at 38 and a half. I think they're just completely, 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 completely dogging the uh, ability of the Steelers offense and on this short week, it's, it's th that's tough for me to say. I If the Steelers offense could get anything generated, do I feel confident enough that they could even cover the five points? At this point, I can't say so for sure. 38 and a half. I'm not entirely sure that I'd want to go on the over. I think I was like really like I was feeling that way last Sunday with the New England Patriots as well. So 
Uh, folks, if you're over at BUSR, it's plus 180 on the money line. Let's see. I'm going to see if they got any interesting prop bets up yet, too, because you also have got these as well. Oh, uh, yeah, you've got all the normal, usual handicaps. You can pretty much take anything that you want here. So don't forget, you're going to go check this out. Be, uh, bit.ly, that's bit.ly uh, with the uh, forward slash B-U-S-R dash Steel City or the promo code Steel City B-U-S-R once again um, with their uh, award-winning what was I going to say? Uh, the VIP treatment with their award-winning 24-7 customer support. Take advantage of that new member bonus once again with the promo code Steel City. So as we take a look at that, I really don't know. I don't know about covering it over or covering the spread on that. That one, uh, that that's just, that's about as rough as it gets, man. <laughs> like the Steelers being an underdog at home by two points was pretty bad. That was like right there. It just covered too. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> just covered. It's it's crazy how that ends up working out. And the Steelers got to play some mistake-free football. You can't have Gunnar Oshevsky muffing a punt. You can't have um, uh, that play with Witherspoon. You, you can't guard that pretty much any better than what he did. And a little bit of timing gets, gets his hands up. It's just, it's unfortunate. And there were some people that were also talking about getting rid of him. Just the same way they're talking about getting rid of Matt Canada. Hire Big Ben as the OC. He calls his own plays last year and... Let me address that real quick, Brian. Does Ben really call his own plays and to what degree with a 25 second play clock and this fancy doohickey that he wears on his wrist that you flip over and it has a bunch of plays on there? How much drawing in the dirt are you doing? You, you got your game plan with however many plays that you put in the book. What do you got? Somewhere between 40 and 60 usually on offense, right? Uh, ben, ben might be telling somebody to change this to a quick slant. He might send someone in motion that's already on a go route. He might audible something at the line. You may already have some built-in changes right there, RPO type action and things of that nature. But it's still the offensive coordinator's playbook, whether it was Bruce Arians or Todd Haley or Randy Fickner or Matt Canada. They had everybody goes back to that. I think it was still in San Diego. The play it was what Marcus Wheaton with Michael Vick. And man, if this doesn't make me think of what's going on this season, nothing will more than Michael Vick struggling to find Antonio Brown, who was in legit goat status at the time, catching like five, six passes a game and at least 50 yards reduced to zero to non-existence as well as Martavis Bryant. You had Le'Veon Bell. Uh, they went to the sideline, they called this play, and Vic heaves it up, and I believe it was for Marcus Wheaton back then, and everybody praises that, and they think about it. They called a timeout in order to get that play drawn up. <laughs> like, come on, come on. Like, I, I, I don't know. Ben, Ben's sitting there, and everybody's saying stuff. Like, Ben said something here. I'm not agreeing with a lot of the things I'm seeing on social media. Like, it sounds like the players are disgruntled, but they're not going to throw a specific one of their own under the bus, and they're just talking yeah. collectively about how the plays need to be addressed to go here or go there. And then you got Ben that says, well, if the OC calls a screen, then you have to throw a screen. And it's like, but they're not calling screens. That's completely different. I don't know. Did they call a screen in this entire game? Maybe one. Maybe not. There was definitely was, at least one. I don't know if there one. were more than one, but there was definitely yeah. at least one. There might have been two. Yeah. And I definitely saw Mitch audible at some point, once or twice. He's going to send guys in motion, see if there's man versus zone coverage and how people slide around and try and determine where he's going to go with the ball. Well, I don't know that he actually determines that at any point. He looks at one guy, kind of goes on his back feet. Thank you. People in the comments, they were like, you yeah, have talked about him on his back feet. It reminds me of playing basketball and you're doing the little fadeaway like jumper and you're, you, you know, you're falling backwards, all your momentum. And it's like off your back foot. Uh, it, a lot of it's ugly. There's passes that were thrown in this game. I can't tell you who it was supposed to go to. Uh, it was like he was trying to do some anticipation maybe or something with timing. And the only ones that seem to have timing are the ones that Deontay Johnson's coming back to, which they had all day long. I the, the the one pass that really I thought epitomized the I'm going to throw it off my back foot um, was the was the down low pass that was it picked I can't remember whether it, it yes it was tipped and picked right throwing I don't remember who he was throwing to it might have been to Pat um, but three guys there he's trying to 
just get it's it's the kind of pass that the only way it gets there is if you if you rocket it right because you need to get and break through all these different defenders with their hands up but no it's this floating thing that he's trying to just dink it in there and one guy gets his hand on it it's tipped it's intercepted and yeah, he throws off his back foot more than anybody I've seen. I, it's his his mechanics are are crap. I I don't even want to beat up on Mitch Trubisky anymore, right? I, I I was not necessarily in his camp, but I was not against him. I'm now firmly against Mitch Trubisky. I I just don't think that the offense is going to go anywhere with him at this point. It's very clear he's not the answer, and right or wrong. If Kenny is the guy you think is the second best option, then Kenny needs the shot. Yeah, and another thing that comes up a lot in the comments that I hadn't actually uh, mentioned in regard to Kenny Pickett is is that he's an older player. He's, what, 24 years old? So when people talk about maturation, maturity, maybe being more of an adult than others, maybe grasping this, and, of course, he played – uh, he played a healthy amount of college, whereas, you know, Mitch Trubisky didn't, he, he had like the, the, what junior year, one year starter in, uh, yeah. ACC. So here we got something with Pickens. Uh, actually this just came across the old, uh, news desk here. Uh, this is from Seth Walter and I believe Seth Walter, where's Seth from ESPN sports analytics. So, you know, as an awful route portfolio. George Pickens, 25% deep fades, highest of any player, 19% go routes, fourth highest, 18% hitches. Okay, 16, that's not really anything to write home about, but it's just telling you they're setting them deep and they're doing nothing with them. Yep. Ryan Baldinger just came out and said the same thing. Now, what has all this got to do with the Cleveland Browns? Well, Cleveland Browns are down like an extra corner, like Greedy Williams already. You've got uh, you've got Denzel Ward. You've got Greg Newsom. You've got a, you've got a plethora of safeties that are there. What, John Johnson? Uh, Grant Delpit, who Grant Delpit's been uh, up and down and still coming back. He was her, his rookie year, so now it's like he was still getting into things last year. I think I think this is still a secondary that you can attack, so to speak, if you're if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers and their offense. And let me see who else. Oh, Ronnie Harrison. Ronnie Harrison's still out there too. Ronnie Harrison could be a bit of a run stuffer too, dime backer type. So he'll get involved in some of these plays because they gave away Troy Hill. They sent him back, uh, what, to the Rams, I believe, uh, in the offseason. Mac, Mac Wilson is the one who got his hands on that ball, Brian, that created the tip, the former Browns guy. And you got Jeremiah Wasu Koromora, JOK, very young, uh, very good. Uh, linebacker Anthony Walker Jr., uh, Sione Taki Taki, but that front, the front for this Cleveland Browns defense. Miles Garrett showed up with a neck injury. We're going to have to update you when I produce the cheat sheet after we have some final uh, injury reports, probably late Wednesday or early Thursday morning. I'll make sure I get on that with all of you. Chase Winovich just got sent over to injured reserve along with Jesse James, who was recently signed. Uh, with the Cleveland Browns. You may know that name from the many years with the Pittsburgh Steelers. But Jadavian Clowney, he's already out too. So Chase Winovich goes to IR. He's pretty much the reserve guy. He didn't play in the first game uh, of the season with the Cleveland Browns against the Panthers. But they literally have maybe two healthy defensive ends of the four or five that they have on their roster, on their, on their active 53. And that would be Alex Wright and Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas was inactive in that Carolina Panthers game, the first game. And then Chase Winovich actually gets a pretty decent amount of time, right? Got some decent amount of time, but we're talking about probably about an 80% share for the starters with Garrett and Clowney. That's a lot to make up for too. That's like losing TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith in this case, and then not have a Malik Reed as a reserve uh, in there. And I don't know about, you know, Tavon, Brian, Jordan Elliott, Tommy Togiai, Perion Winfrey, as far as their interior defensive guys. This sounds like a, especially if Garrett doesn't end up playing, but already without him, they're a little thin. They're going to have to spell Garrett at some points too. You should be able to get some nice winnable matchups with that Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line, we just got to see how healthy Najee is to hit that hole, hit it quick, or are they going to lean more on Jalen Warren as we've seen more of that mix of snap care, snap counts, snap sharing, 
play play counts and everything like a pitch counter on certain players, no, Mike Tomlin knowing and managing the short week. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a interesting uh, a game, you know, <laughs> and I say that and, and want to laugh at myself for saying it. It's going to be an interesting game in the sense that you've got two teams. Both of them are riddled with injuries. Uh, neither one of them is essentially um, showing their full potential, right? Um, the the Cleveland defense, which everybody would have thought would have been much better, has looked very suspect. Their offense, in some ways, may have looked better than we thought it might in this instance, but we knew they'd be able to run the ball. There was never any question about that. But it, you know, the question now is, okay, if you've got offensive line woes, are you going to continue to be able to pound the rock or not? Um, and then you've got a Steelers defense, which as much as I am annoyed with them for laying down and losing uh, those downs that could have given us a secondary chance, I will be 100% honest in telling you I had no confidence that the offense was going to be able to score any points had they gotten the ball back. So, <laughs> you know, it, the defense gave up 17 points, so it's not like they got crunched, right? Defense was not what we had seen against the Bengals. They did they even have a sack? I don't know. No sack. Yeah, that's what I'd um, mentioned. Uh, like uh, probably for the first time since the '75 game uh, NFL history, Mark was yeah. met with a sack in each game. That went back to the Bengals game last year. They may have had another one last season too. It's hard to imagine with TJ Watt getting what 21 and a half yeah. or whatever he had 22. I think 22 and a half or 22, whatever it was. I know he got screwed out of the one in Baltimore with T Tyler Huntley. So, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's very difficult to try and figure out what is going to happen in this game. I mean, the, the Browns defense has been bad enough that a mediocre offense could put up points. They did last week. Um, so that's a possibility. But to be candid, is the Steelers offense as it stands right now, even mediocre. Uh, I don't know that, that it is. I, it probably is just bad. Um, so, you know, I expect, like I could not possibly in a hundred years, even if I was a betting man, put my money on the over on this game. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be doing that either. And don't forget, maybe some of the players that are still there with the Cleveland Browns have a bad taste in their mouth last year from the farewell Ben game. And in that game, I mean, Baker Mayfield was absolutely terrorized. Absolutely terrorized. Of course, TJ Watt was part of that. What was it? Was it eight sacks? I'm pulling it up right now. Uh, let's see. That would be the first contest. I'm trying to see what the second one had. Uh, nine. Nine sacks in that game. And they'd lost two of the balls, two turnovers overall. That's, um, but you're looking at the Steelers only gave up two sacks in that farewell Ben game. And I'm trying to see, hold on a second. I'm going to find out who, uh, Jadavion Clowney had both of those on Ben Roethlisberger on the way out. In the first contest, the Steelers are also only sacked for a deuce only twice. And in that particular uh, contest, Miles Garrett had one and Malik McDowell no longer, uh, no longer there. Right. Uh, also had the other one. So um, yeah. And that, that goes to show that was still Chooks core four. That was still Dan Moore. Probably wasn't Kevin Dotson might not even been kept. Well, it definitely wasn't Ken Kendrick green was yanked with two games left in the season. So they had JC Hassenauer as the center and, uh, of course, Trey Turner. So when we're talking about Chooks is playing above the line, James Daniels playing above the line, that uh, that side of the line, the right side of the line is getting there. The left side of the line we're feeling is starting to get there too. If Dan can just um, get rid of the flinchies and not flinch, if this guy's in his face, <laughs> Miles Garrett, number 95, if he's not out there, that's going to go a long way. Uh, but it's not to say that Dan Moore hasn't had some success and they have a game plan to try and help out the quarterbacks. Mitch is going to have to not get happy feet and not see ghosts. And it, it's very difficult to do on a short week. I, I, I don't know. Did he just have a poor game? And maybe, maybe he balls out. Maybe he has one of these like games where he pops off the page every so often, which he has done. It's just more rare than just like you said, to play it safe, to not lose your job, 
to the the just getting by and that that just it's not acceptable just two touchdown drives and nine quarters of football they have punted 24 drives 24 offensive series for the pittsburgh steelers and they punted in 12 of them 12 it's just absolutely mind-blowing the 50 percent on first uh on third down and converting on that Pretty darn good, though, against the Patriots. We saw Derek Watt get involved. We saw Najee get, mm -hmm. uh, peel off and get like four yards when he only needed one. We saw a couple of completed passes that needed to get there still. So you got to give a little bit of credit where credit's due there. Those type of things could win you the game. At least there were a couple of sustained drives because of getting those uh, first downs. And there wasn't like this giant lopsided, like 17 minutes time of possession like they had against the Bengals. That's the way they're going to have to win this game. The other thing that I'm looking for, Brian, on the other side is the Steelers just have to defend Mar Amari Cooper. Don't let Amari Cooper come across with these quick type slants like Jamar Chase had attacking at the linebackers. We don't know Devin Bush's. Uh, full availability. He's the only guy that was truly dinged on the injury report with the Steelers at the time of our recording here. So uh, again, we'll have some updates on that. What do you see maybe as your keys to the game since I kind of gave it there? Obviously, you got to pressure Brissett, but I say just bottle up the run. Don't let uh, don't let uh, Amari Cooper get posted up on like any linebackers. Don't let him get any of the uh, quick slants. And then of course, the Steelers still have to have some efficiency. I hate to say third down, but they don't ever get to the sticks on first and second. That's kind of been the standard, sadly yeah. to say that for like the last three, four seasons now. Like that the the key to them winning or having a chance to win this game is going to be their ability to stop Cleveland from running the ball. Um forcing Jacoby Brissett to try and beat you uh is is the best solution that they have. And they don't have to sack him a million times, right? They don't need 12 sacks or seven sacks or five sacks. They simply need to make sure they play sound defense, hold their gaps, and don't let him beat you with his legs. Force him to try and beat you with his arm. Um, if that can be done and they can play well and they can keep the, the Cleveland running attack somewhat under control, that will be the deep the, the defense will have done its job. The offense, the offense has to do exactly what we said in the last game. They need to sustain drives. They need to get some points. They need to not make mistakes. And that includes special teams. Th th look, this team, I don't want to underplay the, the muff punt by Gunner, because that was a huge game flipping, game changing problem. Yeah. Right. Without that. They might win that game. <laughs> All right. But yeah, very much so. Just take the, the yeah. point. That was easy points. It gave it to him yeah. right on the doorstep there. Exactly. Um, you know, so I don't want to under undercut that. But, you know, the thing is, this team simply is not good enough right now to overcome a single flop like that. You know, you'd like to think they are, but they're not. They can't lose the turnover battle. If they lose the turnover battle, they're going to lose the game. They not only have to win the turnover battle, but they can't give up points if they do turn the ball over. They just they have to play as close to error-free football as they can. And on the offensive side, it pretty much has to be error. -free. Special teams and offense simply cannot put the defense. Yeah, yeah, and Jacoby percent like something like uh, eighty-one and a half completion percentage, so twenty-two of twenty-seven. But then again, like we were saying, uh, got a lot of the backs and tight ends involved in in, uh, in that pass game, and that's exactly what they're going to have to. Uh, the Steelers are going to have to look out, and I think they match up just well with that. I think they've got the I think they've got the linebackers. I think they've got the defensive backs to be able to to match up very well with the Cleveland Browns. And I think they have enough depth too, that I don't want to say that any type of fatigue or anything like that, uh, this should be a bus trip. I was hearing some rumors that they were just going to drive up Thursday morning. I'm not sure if that, if that's going to hold true or not, maybe a little bit of extra rest in their own bed. Uh, the Browns are beat up on both of their lines. And like we said, you just, uh, you just don't know how this is going to play out. If miles Garrett's going to play that or not, that's a huge factor. I, I think that the Steelers should be able to hold up well against the receiving core. It just isn't the very deep receiving core. Donovan Peoples Jones is just he's he's all right. He could stretch the field some, but like Anthony Schwartz, who's supposed to be the burner and is supposed to be the guy that they brought in to do that, just hasn't he never lived up to the billing. 
And I'm not entirely confident that Jacoby Brissett is a guy that's going to deliver that same type of football either. They may not just, we talk about a lot, like is Mitch allowed to do certain things? And I think maybe Jacoby isn't allowed to do some things as well. Um, But I have been Brian, as you mentioned, surprised at how the Browns offense has been operating through the start. And it begs the question, we're wearing these jerseys right now. Do you think, Stan Saverin said, he asked this question post-game show to one of the callers that called in. Do you think that the that the Steelers' offense operates any differently if Kenny Pickett is in there versus what Ben was able to do last year or Mitch has been able to do to date? And my thought process is he can't possibly do any worse. You already talked about being aggressive, anticipating with his throws. I think he's able, he's got the ability and accuracy to go deep, and I also think he just has, he just has that it factor where – he, he just reads it, I think, faster, and he'll be able to get out there, and he might just think about this. If he's able to if he's able to conjure up anything more than 12 punts and 24 possessions, what level of intensity is that going to bring? The team is just going to raise all boats, rise with the tide, man, and that's what I think would end up happening, and that might be something. Do you think it could happen this Thursday? I don't find it entirely likely, but you just never know. They could pull that trigger depending on the way the game script plays out. Let's say this. I'll tell you. You get to halftime and it's 10-7 and the offenses look like crap or it's 10-3. Watch to see who starts the second half. (laughs) Does it it matter who gets the ball first? No. At that point, I don't think it does. Um, I think they will... If Mitch plays well, that's a different story. But if you go through the first half of that game and the game remains close, or even worse, if the Browns start to build a lead and Mitch continues to sputter and the offense under his hand continues to sputter, they will have no choice but to try and make a change just to see if they can spark the offense, right? And so while I don't believe they will start Pickett in this game, I will not end up being surprised if Kenny Pickett makes his NFL debut Thursday night. That's very, very likely. Um, I mean, we're not coordinating the guy for Canton yet in a gold jacket, but we may as well mention before we sign off here. And of course, don't forget the, uh, the cheat sheet show coming right around the corner to get you the rest of the updates. I'm going to actually see if we have an, uh, another updated injury report real quick as well. And we do Brian, uh, straight from Brown, um, uh, Cleveland Browns.com. We have, uh, let's see if I can make this any bigger on screen a little bit here. Joel Petonio, another DMP two days in a row. That doesn't look likely for him to play. Harrison Bryant showed up on this report. He's basically the two, the second of the tight ends that the Browns have. They do play uh, some tight, two tight end sets. The Steelers have been kind of remiss of using that and also have not had success in, um, and using those guys to block, even with Friermuth at this point, is getting a little bit of shade from some of the experts. But Clowney out, uh, DMP Conklin limited again for an extra day. Uh, of course, uh, you see Jesse James and Chase Winovich are still on this report, but they've already been placed on injured reserve as of this morning. Chris Hubbard had an illness, so he was limited. That's kind of important, too, because if Conklin doesn't play, I understand that Hudson's sliding over, uh, and then you got Jedrick Wills, but you, that's that's like the last tackle you're getting – you're going, uh, you're you're going into old mother Hubbard's cupboard, and uh, yep. and Hubbard's not there. <laughs> There's nothing else. No Hubbard in the cupboard. There's not a lot of other guys on the roster to go to, especially on a short week or get anybody uh, playing up to this. And then uh, Isaiah Thomas, another defensive end, is on this report. Full practice though, he's reported with a hand. He, he's got to play. That guy's gonna he's gonna put a little whatever you need to rub in on there and play because this might be dirt. his time in the spotlight. Dirt yeah, on. dirt spit. Whatever you could get on there, he's got to get out there. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, full participant, Devin Bush. So it looks good for him to still be out there. I think Devin Bush may have turned the corner. I think he's been playing a lot better so, thus far through two games. Again, it's still just two games. So we could see a whole lot of stuff change. But a lot of this is if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. So we kind of got our idea on where this is going to go. Mike Tomlin pull Mike, Mike Tomlin going to pull. I don't think Mike Tomlin pulls the trigger either. If this is a Sunday game, Brian. No, 
What's the bobblehead? I'm just getting him ready to make his prediction. All right, put him in there. The bobblehead. Right. The Brian bobblehead. Bobble what do you say? Do the Steelers end up winning the game on Thursday? No. No. The bobblehead. I didn't notice the head even shook that way. That doesn't seem possible. The bobblehead says no. Bobblehead's giving this game to Cleveland. <laughs> However, you've got Kenny here saying, if I'm involved, I'm involved, I'm involved. I'm going to shake my head. Yes. <laughs> I had to, man. Uh, this well, thing, this thing's pretty, it's pretty awesome. I love it. Um, I don't own a whole lot of the bobbleheads, but the few that I do, I very much enjoy. I actually have one, a Cleveland Indians one. I think it was uh, Trevor Bauer. And but he's dressed as like Stone Cold Steve Austin with the WWE title belt. It's like the most bizarre crossover bobblehead that you're going to find anywhere. Buddy, buddy picked that up for me, knowing, um, you know, people are going to be like, wait, you follow a Cleveland baseball team, too. That's a longer story with my, you know, living halfway between Cle growing up halfway between Cleveland and Pittsburgh. The Pirates and Indians didn't play each other. They're both a different league. So we actually followed both of them. And that was a very interesting thing when my uncle showed up to a game at PNC where they both played each other. About 10 years ago, it was on July 4th, and my uncle's got, I believe, Chief Wahoo on his cap and then a Pirates t-shirt. And everybody's looking at him like, what is wrong with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> but they never used to play each other until they started making all these changes with baseball. It was pretty cool. A little bit of info for our two percenters that are out there. Uh, again, folks, don't forget to uh, check out our uh, new member incentive over at BUSR. Once again, it's at bit.ly slash B-U-S-R dash Steel City up to a thousand dollar match on your first deposit and twenty five dollars in casino chips. And Brian, hey, thanks for taking some time out of your busy schedule for the early week here. This is always, 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 always tough for us to get to uh, get on the schedule, let alone like with the short week that's going on. Yep. Always good to be here. You know, it's, uh, hey, you know. Short week, then a mini buy, whatever. And that's why I don't. That's why I don't think if it were a Sunday one o'clock kickoff, that Kenny's going in yet either. I think they would still have Mitch on a short leash. I don't think they'd make that change right away. But depending, uh, depending on what goes on, maybe even in this game, must win. I think so. Divisional game, AFC game. This is a game they they absolutely need to win. Um, I mean, if they if they have aspirations to have a season beyond the regular one they need to win this game oh that was the other part i wanted to mention for again this is good content for the two percenters you'll like this too brian give it some love to not only kickers but that 80s team did you see this six former steelers nominated for the pro football hall of fame class of 2023 um of course they're in alphabetical order but i'm going to say headlined by gary anderson who, hey, Gary, if you end up making it here, my friend, I got the kicker football up here that I need to get signed and uh, got a couple signatures on there just because I felt it was always easier to do that. I know you got the linebacker helmet, Brian, but you're crazy. That's a lot of guys to chase around. But on that, you did get one of the other guys on this list, right? Chad Brown. You just Chad recently Brown, got James Chad. James Harrison. They're yep. both on that helmet. James Farrier, Casey Hampton, and Heinz Ward also uh, running up that list. Running up that list. Haven't got Potsy yet. Yeah, well, we'll see. Miles Jack, man, looking like a force, too, looking like a very good free agent signing. I, I still like the Steelers' chances, even though defensively they looked uh, – it, it's you get worn out to a certain point, I think, in that game. And the offense, like I said, the two three and outs did that defense no favors. You know what Belichick's going to do there. Yeah, I knew it. I looked at that clock as soon as we got into the fourth quarter. I'm like, man, if they're down a touchdown, if they went down 14. I said, there's no way this offense is generating 14 points. I, ha I hate to be pessimistic. You know how much we love. We love this team. I mean, look, we have a freaking show. It's not to sit here and bitch and complain about them. <laughs> it really isn't. It's not. And I almost hate when people do that. But just realistically, it's like we want to see what's best for the Steelers. And right now we're starting to think maybe that investment, that first round pick might be the right direction to get headed. So um, I'll have the full finished and complete injury report over on the cheat sheet, maybe sometime tomorrow or whatever. And folks, that'll do it for us. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Joe Kuzma and his name is Brian E. Roach. Until next time, we encourage everyone out there to be safe, be good, and we'll catch you later.
We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com. 